Okay, let's get started. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. And thank you all for uh, taking the time to join us today. We have some great content lined up and uh, look forward to sharing it with you. Uh, my name is Prashant Shetty. I'm the VP of Marketing for Guardian Analytics, and I'll be your moderator today. Uh, today, I'm also joined by my colleague, Debbie Lopez. Uh, Debbie is the head of our Fraud Desk Strategic Managed Services uh, group at Guardian Analytics. And I'm happy to have her uh, with us today to share her expertise. And uh, just as an administrative item, uh, you know, we're, our, our speaking time will be roughly 40 to 45 minutes, uh, after which we will take uh, some questions at the end. Uh, feel free to enter the questions into the uh, question module. Okay, today's topic is uh, the case for a turnkey approach to fraud operations. Um, the operative word here being turnkey. Uh, so turnkey, you know, usually implies uh, easy, rapid, streamlined, you know, quick to deploy. But in this case, we believe it also has connotations of being modern, state-of-the-art, and a more agile approach. Now, we at Guardian Analytics consider our approach uh, to be based on the principles of this turnkey model and, and a real differentiator in, in the marketplace. So without further ado, let's take a look at the, the agenda. As you can see, we're going to start with a quick description of what the components of an effective turnkey model look like. Uh, we're then going to switch over and talk about um, some specific managed services case studies that we've uh, had here at Guardian Analytics, and then a transition over to kind of the best practices around implementing a turnkey solution and what it means from an actual, uh, you know, practical standpoint. All right, so let's kick it off with just a brief introduction about Guardian Analytics. Um, in case you're not familiar with us, we are a Silicon Valley-based uh, software company and a market leader in applying behavior analytics and machine learning to fraud detection, both in banks and financial institutions, as well as uh, corporations and enterprises. Now, we have a particularly strong history in banking with over uh, 450 financial institution customers of, of varying sizes. Um, and we address the needs specifically of heads of fraud operations, heads of deposit operations, payment operations, and, and other uh, risk management titles. We protect well over 40 million commercial and, and retail account holders at, uh, at the banks, um, as well as uh, accounts in, in corporations as well. And on an annual basis, we monitor well over 5 billion activities, uh, ranging from online or mobile actions to uh, wire transfers, ACH transfers, et cetera. So that's a quick snapshot of our um, of our accomplishments or, or you know, performance to date. Um, but one of our lesser known but very significant assets of the company is the fraud desk division that, uh, that Debbie heads. Uh, this is a managed services group that truly pioneers the turnkey approach for, for our customers that are looking to get started in the right way, quickly and effectively uh, in, in, on the fraud detection front. Now, as you can see here, there's uh, some very impressive credentials here uh, across this team. Uh, we have over 30 uh, different uh, uh, organizations, certifications and memberships, 200 plus person years of, of uh, fraud experience, fraud analysis experience. And on an annual basis, uh, this team across our different uh, customers reviews well over 1 million uh, alerts uh, related to, to fraud management. So. Besides these very impressive uh, industry credentials, uh, this team also has very deep product expertise and delivers uh, unmatched value to customers through their you know, deep knowledge of our technology and products. Next slide, please. Okay, so, so going back to this notion of, of turnkey, well, what exactly do we mean by that? What, what is our definition of, of turnkey? Uh, the way we see it uh, here at Guardian Analytics, it, it really has four components. Uh, the four components uh, you know, listed here are infrastructure, technology, processes, and people. So we believe that these are the four key building blocks that really combine to realize rapid time to value, uh, an, an agile approach to, to fraud operations and fraud detection, and really overall a highly effective operating model that leverages both 
internal assets as well as uh, external assets. Now, why is the turnkey model important? Um, you go back to the previous slide. Uh, this is important because you know uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, the turnkey model really provides, as we see it, improved cross-channel visibility uh, that doesn't come with some of the traditional uh, that doesn't come with some of the traditional legacy models. And secondly, uh, it, it's it's a well-known fact that fraudsters are are constantly improving their ways. And so having a turnkey model can eliminate some of the delays uh, in, in time to value, which can result in, uh, in opportunity cost and, and potential losses. So those are the two you know, key reasons why we believe uh, the turnkey approach is, is so critical and so uh, time sensitive. Okay, so let, let's go into each of those pieces. I, I mentioned you know, infrastructure, technology, processes, and people. Let, let's start with infrastructure. So, you know, we believe that, that the turnkey model really uh, has, has a better infrastructure approach uh, from being, you know, focused on uh, a more on-demand, you know, software as a service uh, focused approach. So when we talk about infrastructure, we're talking about both the, the physical infrastructure that is needed to run uh, sort of on-demand cloud-ready operations, uh, as well as the virtual infrastructure of having kind of on-demand software as a service uh, that's designed for, for high efficiency. And, and all this without the burden of doing any kind of installation and, and worrying about overhead and management uh, in, in your own data center. So this, this is cloud ready and, and ready to use right away. Okay, and the, the second factor, the second building block is the technology piece. And when we talk about technology, we're talking about uh, sort of a combination of both the advanced analytics-based technology uh, um, that, that underpins our anomaly detection and risk scoring models. Uh, and we're also referring to the technology pieces, which is our market-leading solutions for online, mobile, ACH wire, and, and business intelligence. And the result of having this, this technology stack is that it can really elevate uh, your overall kind of performance, uh, you know, from a, uh, you know, using this two by two matrix I have uh, that's shown in the in the slide here, uh, it can really elevate the performance from a fraud capture rate and overall cost effect effectiveness standpoint uh, pretty significantly, uh, and so that's that's really the the benefits of of the technology piece. Next slide. All right, so that. Uh, leads me to processes. So, uh, you know, traditionally in the market, we've seen, um, you know, other vendors just primarily focus on on just uh, the technology or the platform piece. But we understand at Guardian Analytics that success depends on, you know, more than just having a technology or software solution. And that's where the, the processes and the people are so critical. So when we talk about process, we're talking about uh, developing structured workflows with built-in controls that are optimized uh, for world-class fraud operations. Uh, and these processes are designed to be end-to-end, uh, -end, fully integrated and, and using a risk-based approach. So by adopting the right processes, uh, and Debbie will go into this in more detail, uh, we have the ability to, to transition customers that have you know, shown this repeatedly uh, from, from a siloed channel-specific approach to a much more effective, you know, holistic and integrated risk-based approach. Okay, and lastly, but not least, the people. Um, so when we talk about, you know, people being a key part of the turnkey model, uh, we're really talking about the, the tremendous know-how and knowledge and expertise, and really a complete understanding of how fraud operations works and, and how, how, how fraud schemes work. And that's what you get uh, with the turnkey model and specifically with what Fraud Desk offers. And they bring a very uh, mature consultative approach to fraud detection overall. And as you can see here, uh, that approach, uh, you know, not, not only is, is um, beneficial from a knowledge and productivity standpoint, but is also inherently a much more flexible model that allows you to augment your internal resources uh, with, uh, with a managed services model and scale up or down based on your needs. So these are the four sort of key pieces or key building blocks um, of the turnkey model. And at this point, I'd like to quickly hand over to 
Debbie Lopez, my colleague. Uh, as I mentioned, she's the head of our uh, Fraud Desk Strategic Services Unit. And Debbie will now take over for the next 15 or 20 minutes and provide uh, really a very practical, actionable perspective on this turnkey approach and, and what it means in reality and how to make it work. Um, and she's going to uh, you know, complement that with some real-world success stories that underscores uh, our, our perspective on this. So, Debbie, over to you. Thank you, Prashant. And once again, thank you all for attending today's webinar. As Prashant mentioned earlier, um, the elements of Guardian Analytics Turnkey Approach, uh, the four elements, the infrastructure, the technology, the processes, the people. These are all the elements that must be taken into consideration when referring to fraud operations. Once you, when you look at it in the bigger picture, once you establish the infrastructure and technology, you require the, um, you require the processes and people. So it all comes together. Each institution has its own internal process. Um, and we're all aware of that. Each process is usually defined by type of department. So for example, consolidated teams versus individual teams. Um, or fraud detection concentration um, would be like only wires, only ACH, only online banking. So there's obviously a variation out there on how all these, all these things come together. And then of course, um, the complexity of determining what type of formal documentation is appropriate. Um, establishing processes, or what I refer to as policies and procedures, become your base of your operational overall workflow. And to provide you an example of the operational workflow, here you see fraud desk operational view. So it's a bigger picture here. Um, and as a reminder, fraud desk provides fraud prevention and managed service to various financial institutions. And we utilize our own product solutions to perform our duties. As you see right now, um, on the left side corner here, um, you'll start with the bank systems, which is actually the bank data. From there, we go to the actual alerts, which ultimately becomes an alert. In this case, the alerts are a result of our product solutions which is the technology, and everything else are all established um, processes and people. So as you look at this, the fraudless team, this is where we have the experienced analyst. If you look to the top, oh, you have fraud intel and group experience. The fraud intel is how we learn and incorporate this with our analysis. The group experience is how we join efforts to target fraud. So this all comes together here, how we actually work together to, um, to assist our customers. And then finally, the alert triage and prioritization. Uh, the fraud death analyst only escalating alerts that re require further review. It's very important for us to make sure we control this and we assist our customers in the services that we provide by utilizing, obviously, our product and also the learned fraud intel that we have within the team. The ultimate goal here is to simplify the overall process for our customers. Um, now, you may be asking yourself, how does this come together for our fraud risk customers? And as um, Prashama had mentioned, we do have case studies. Uh, so we've created the case studies on various customers and products. Um, and before we start the first case study, every customer is different, and we are presenting these case studies to have an overall understanding of the turnkey approach. So our first case here, online banking business. Here's a customer of 130 billion assets, and the challenges here are multiple uh, fraud duties and expertise needed for the business monitoring. In this particular example, the analyst at the financial institution um, has responsibilities for multiple task project duties, extremely high workloads. And uh, one of the main requests here was it was very important for this customer that our analysts had fraud experience to assist them with their target and approach on fraud. Um, the results and here, and this is based on um, a year worth of data. The review was actually 50,000 alerts per year, escalation of 4,000 cases per year. And what we mean by this, this is the triage that fraud analysts will have to perform and escalate to our customers just to give you a perspective of what, what we're reviewing and what we're actually submitting over to our customers. We've prevented in this particular case 120 confirmed fraud cases and prevented 5 million. Um, and this is why, um, when you look at the confirmed fraud and the 5 million of the losses, this is a, why it was so important for the customer to make sure we had the fraud experience here to assist them. And in working together, we were able to accomplish exactly the target and actually the needs and meet the challenges um, for our customer. Another case study here is online retail. 
In this case, it's a customer with one billion assets. The challenge is here are the volume of alerts and expertise needed to address the fraud grain. Um, in this particular case, um, the customer had limited staff and unable to handle volumes. And because of the limitation the fraud, the, the fraud team had on staffing, they wanted to make sure they could easily work with the fraud team to assist them with known fraud ranks. <clears throat> in this case, this was very important for them because they knew exactly um, the fraud ranks and they had well knowledge base exactly the type of frauds that they encountered. Uh, so they wanted to hand it off to someone that was actually familiar with this and could assist them with this. Um, the results on this one was um, a review of 80,000 alerts um, per year. Um, escalated is 3,500 cases per year. Again, this is the triage that fraud defense analysts will have to perform and escalate to our customers. Um, and then eventually, you know, we prevented 100 um, fr confirmed frauds. Um, by effecti effectively working together, we accomplished our own common goal, which was to target the fraud rings as the customer actually um, wanted that expertise to be applied here to this service. Uh, so it was not only the product, but also our expertise to put it all together for this particular case study. The third one here is ACH ODFI. And the customer here was at 40 billion assets. The challenge is here with multiple operational share duties, meeting federal uh, submission deadlines. In this particular case, the analysts that had the ACH responsibilities also had a good amount of operational duties that they had to perform, um, making it um, unable to meet federal submission deadlines or always late or you know, uh, running around to make those deadlines. So uh, as a result, we actually worked together with this customer um, entire workflow and seeing exactly when was their submission batch feed uh, what time the fraud death analyst will complete the workload, uh, agree, mutually agree to time frames exactly when their further submission deadlines were uh, uh, ready, um, so we can actually meet all deadlines and avoid any missed deadlines for them. Um, and by working together, we ensured that, meeting de that we were all meeting deadlines and covering all the reviews that we had to review for them. Um, and this is something that we actually do work with our customers on an entire workflow. Uh, to meet their operational needs, and they don't have to worry about that. We just have to work together and make sure we meet all the deadlines as requested. For this case study, it's wires, and just I'll make a notation here is that um, fraud just does not cover on um, the, the wire services, uh, but we did want to bring it, um, we wanted to present it here um, because it's, it is one of our popular solutions here. Um, this is actually for 24 billion assets. The challenge is here is a high call, bad volume, no set criteria to target which wires to review, and no time to investigate. Now, in this particular case, the fraud team was extremely frustrated with the volumes and unable to conduct investigation, um, and very obviously extremely time consuming to review all wires and do callbacks for each wire that they were actually reviewing. Um, by implementing our wire solution, applying behavior fraud detection technology, it narrowed in on the riskier alerts to review this, this reduced the overall volume of wires to review and callbacks. This also provided the analysts to concentrate on important tasks, such as investigation. One of the uh, interesting things here is working with this customer is, you know, really truly understanding the impact of the operational and exactly what they were using at that point in time before they even selected our solution. Um, and this is, these are the true real challenges that many customers actually experience. Um, this one was, was unique in that there was no set criteria to review wires, so they were just actually calling every single one of them. Once, you know, we actually uh, implemented the solution, obviously there was a reduction in callbacks um, and a reduction in number of wires reviewed. And the automation obviously provided the time to investigate and do even other special projects that they were not able to do in the past without the solution. Now, best practices. Um, there's a lot of best practices here. These are the ones that I ended up picking, which are the ones that consistently come up for any kind of turnkey model. The first one being conduct a risk assessment. This is a must for everyone um, to identify specific fraud risk and uh, evaluate current risk controls. 
in many situations, um, in, in a lot of institutions, no one conducts this part of it, which actually does simplify the entire workflow and processes and procedures overall. It's a very important step of exactly a turnkey model and establishing uh, well be best practices within the fraud operations unit. Number two is establishing roles and responsibilities. And this is more who is doing what, um, everyone has a role, and then a very important role here. This is all part of policies and procedures. This is critical in any um, fraud operation and obviously a turnkey model that you want to establish um, the roles and responsibilities of each individual and what they're doing. So if you are doing um, a, a role where you have an individual team or um, you know, different teams are that you're working together. It is very important to understand this and who's doing what and how you bring it all together. This actually works extremely well to do escalations and investigations on all type of fraud. Number three is to select and deploy fraud control tools. What do you require to better perform your fraud operation duties? You know, this is where the product solutions come into place. You know, you want to go out and review your options um, and select the one that fits your needs. But also understand, you know, when, you, when we talk about turnkey models, this is very important to understand the solutions that are out there. You want to understand what does the solution do, how is that going to um, actually impact you, and how is that going to actually um, work with your overall workload with the fraud operations. This is when it all comes together. And then once you have that and you review your product solution, it's actually going and go ahead and selecting one and moving forward. And then number four, this is very important, learning your fraud data. The more you understand your fraud, the better you are detecting it. This is also very helpful for the number one, which is a risk assessment. And this actually helps you in so many different ways. Um, one thing is great is to learn different types of frauds that are out there, but your fraud is very important to your, your institution, your needs. This is exactly where you actually put all this information together. And never actually, um, once you learn one pattern, you want to learn the next one. And it's a continual learning um, effort with the fraud data. Um, but always keep that in mind and making sure that you learn your fraud data and see exactly what's impacting to, to you today, what impacted you the last year. Um, you never know if those frauds will come back at you. So it's always understanding your fraud. And number five, evaluate, measure, and manage. In order to be efficient, you must evaluate, measure, and manage continually. This is the effective fraud operations approach. Um, and, and you can go and revisit all these things, because as you grow, as you change, as you add different solutions or services, you will have to reevaluate all one through four um, as you continue to learn and manage the, the solutions that you have in place. Um, and this ends my piece once again. Um, thank you, and, and I'll turn this over to Sean. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Debbie. That was very informative. Thank you for uh, for sharing all of that. Uh, a couple of quick questions before before I uh, I start restart my section. Um, you know, when we talked about you know about 450 different institutions as as our customers and many of them your customers, what what types of financial institutions are these? Uh, what, what sort of size are we talking? So we have all sorts of um, financial institutions. You have from credit unions, federal credit unions, mid-sized banks, and large banks. So we have a good variation of different types of banks and all with different needs. Right. And, you know, the, the, uh, I was intrigued by the last uh, case study that you mentioned, the wire, uh, wire transfer case study. Now, now, did your team specifically work with the customers on, uh, with the customer on their specific operational needs there? In this case, it was different. So in this particular case, we provided more of a consulting approach to assist them with their challenges and also assisted with how our solutions would work for them. So it was a different approach. They were not a project customer, but we were able to provide more of a consulting approach to assist them. Excellent. All right. Great. Thank you, Debbie. We'll get back to more questions uh, to you in a little bit. Uh, but I just want to move on uh, to our next piece. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we at Guardian Analytics are, are, we believe in and are firmly committed to this turnkey approach to fraud operations. Uh, and we see, you know, this notion of turnkey is not just a, a, a theoretical or academic concept. You know, at the end of the day, uh, it's used to drive some very uh, strong business outcomes. So outcomes do matter in this case. And what we have seen, you know, based on all of the data that, that we've had and having been in operation for, 
for close to a decade and, and having done this for uh, you know 450 plus customers is this turnkey approach does uh, significantly cut fraud transactions uh, and, and reduce fraud losses uh, significantly. Uh, so you know we, we have conducted specific case studies where they uh, have cut transactions fraudulent transactions by up to 90 percent so some, some pretty impressive results there. Uh, the second part of it is that it, it results in much more efficient operations, and what that translates to is, you know, fewer false positives, uh, and that's a direct function of our technology, more accurate uh, alerting, uh, and eliminating the need for sort of expen expensive and inconvenient callbacks. Uh, the third outcome that, that we generate or we're responsible for is this idea of quick time to value. After all, at the end of the day, um, that that's the that's one of the key pieces uh, of value that, that a turnkey model provides. Uh, I go back to the story of this one customer that was kind of struggling with their kind of traditional legacy model for for a long time. Uh, this is a, a a regional bank, and they had implemented some some previous solution that was taking very long to implement and not generating uh, the value for them. And so they made uh, the business decision to switch to Guardian Analytics. Uh, specifically for their wire operations, and they were up and running within 52 days. Uh, and and that that measure uh, is really pretty staggering. And it's not it's not really the exception, uh, you know, when it comes to to many of our deployments. And and the important thing is because they were up and running so quickly, they're able to catch many uh, you know wire fraud losses and many fraudulent transactions much more quickly, which could have been lost potentially in a, in a long deployment cycle or a long implementation cycle. Uh, lastly, and, and this is sometimes a less well understood benefit, is uh, by, by, by leveraging the turnkey approach, by leveraging a combination of kind of your internal uh, assets as well as, you know, external assets provided by a trusted partner like us, it, it creates the outcome of a, a more nimble and agile organization uh, and makes the financial institution much more competitive in, in, in the marketplace. And, and this has been said to us over and again, over and over again, is uh, you know fraud operations, uh, you know, an optimized fraud operation can really provide a distinct competitive advantage in the market. And many of our customers uh, truly believe that. Next slide. Okay. So so given that those are the business outcomes that that we help produce that we help realize, um, I wanted to end with sort of a quick snapshot of what our uh, overall portfolio stack looks like. So the architecture of our overall portfolio, and that's kind of represented in this financial crime platform, you know, diagram that we have here. Uh, so it, it sort of encapsulates those four, encapsulates those four pieces of the uh, turnkey model that we talked about earlier, the infrastructure piece, the technology piece, uh, and the you know people in process. So so going from you know from bottom to top, um, you know the the omnichannel risk engine with its integration capabilities through our enterprise API uh, is the core of our our technology. Uh, you know that that provides the the highly accurate you know anomaly detection and risk scoring capabilities that uh, truly differentiates our behavioral analytics and machine learning approach. Uh, that runs on our uh, on our uh, reliable, secure, and high-performing kind of cloud infrastructure, uh, and built on top of that risk engine are, are other pieces of the technology stack, our applications related to online, mobile, ACH, wire, uh, and for the enterprises, we have uh, a special application related to procurement, and coming soon is our AML solution. So all of these are, you know, pieces of the technology stack that truly totally differentiates us. And as Debbie correctly mentioned, you know, uh, fraud operations at the end of the day needs to be managed and measured effectively. Uh, and that's the layer on top uh, called the fraud cockpit that basically provides the ability to, to have a consolidated single pane of glass view, sort of a business intelligence dashboard that enables fraud executives to, to, uh, to effectively manage their, their overall fraud operations. So the, the pieces of the, of the layer cake that, that are in the center really are part of the technology stack. And then flanking this on the two sides are, you know, the fraud risk managed services, which Debbie, uh, you know, covered in quite quite a bit of detail, providing augmented services and really a, a terrific level of know-how and expertise uh, on the fraud domain. 
And then on the other side is our training and professional services to really help uh, get a customer up and running and, and ensure customer success. So all of these elements together uh, come together in, in our uh, financial crime platform that epitomizes our uh, turnkey approach. All right, uh, so in summary, uh, and by the way, I want to give a quick reminder to, to those of you who haven't had your chance to uh, submit your questions, uh, please go ahead and enter your questions in the, in the online uh, uh, the, the question panel that, that you see on your screen. Uh, but, I, but I do want to you know, summarize by saying that you know, technology alone does not make a world-class fraud operations or a high-performing uh, fraud team. That just doesn't happen that way. Uh, the success factors that uh, create a world-class fraud operations are many. Uh, we believe it's a synergy of infrastructure with technology, with people, and process. These are the key ingredients that are needed for ensuring the right uh, optimal business outcomes. So uh, as a final thought, I would urge you all to sort of think about what your current model looks like. How, 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 does, it, how does it operate? Uh, does it have these four you know, key ingredients that we mentioned here? Uh, are you overall, you know, optimized for success? So, you know, give it a thought and, and please do talk to us. We can, we can certainly help you and we'd love to, love to hear from you and, and have a discussion. All right, so, so with that, uh, we're gonna uh, take a few minutes to do some, some Q&A. And I see a couple of questions that have kind of come through, come through the panel here. Uh, let, me, let me take one here. Uh, Debbie, this is a question for you. You mentioned as one of the best practices, uh, you should, as you, you know, to quote you, learn your fraud data. Uh, can you talk about how other financial institutions actually talk, you know, learn their data and track their frauds? Um, sure. Um, it really varies. Every institution has their own method of tracking fraud. Some of them actually still use spreadsheets. Um, we have some of them that actually have on their fraud um, case management um, on the solution on that. And then other ones have their home based um, solution that they've created. So there's various different formats that are out there today um, that are being used. Okay. Uh, all right, so we have uh, one more question that just come in, uh, which is, uh, what is your advice for smaller credit unions that want to adopt this uh, turnkey approach? Any, any specific guidance to to credit unions? I think um, our solution works extremely well, and I can say that because a lot of the project customers are credit unions. So today, actually, um, one of the things is, is that it kind of it helps organize a lot of what you guys do. Um, so it's a really helpful solution, and I will highly recommend to see a demo on something like that to really see exactly the advantages that you can take on um, selecting our solutions, um, since we do have a wide range. Okay. Um, here's another question that has come through. I, I understand your solution is driven by behavioral analytics and machine learning, but is this a black box feature or does the customer have the capability of creating specific attributes to tailor their specific needs? So our product actually um, does provide our customers the ability to create specific criteria to accommodate their specific needs. Now, keeping in mind, one of the things that does assist is the way that our, the behavior analytic works for each solution is um, targeted for behavior analytics. And that in itself provides some sort of organization for you to um, narrow in on what you want. But we do have the capability of, if you do want to have um, selecting a criteria, we have that capability within our product. And does that need... Uh, professional services help to, to no. do that, or the, the customer they can do that themselves. on their own, okay. and we can assist them exactly in walking them through through that process. Very good. Okay. Um, here's another question. Uh, so the 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 question is: When you say fraud desk analysts can triage alerts, what exactly does that mean? What does triaging mean? One of the things is, is for the fraud analysis, it will be will review all high risk alerts. So within our product, we concentrate on the riskier alerts. Um, so we can take it as an example of the online banking business case study. Uh, so the fraud analyst actually will cover, um, you know, 50,000 alerts. 
But out of these alerts, the only ones that would be escalated to our customer would be 4,000 um, to further investigate. And our goal is here to obviously work with our customers and only truly send out those, the ones that they actually want to work on and concentrate on that so they can concentrate on other duties. Okay, great. So, uh, so Debbie, actually, I, I had a question uh, for you that, that I think uh, is probably on, on some customers' minds, which is, um, I'm sure there are customers on this call thinking, uh, you know, they've invested in, in sort of the traditional or legacy uh, kind of approach to, to fraud detection, but now they're looking at this turnkey approach with some interest and maybe considering a switch or a transition, uh, but they're not sure if they're the right fit. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so what what sort of criteria would you say or attributes um, organizationally uh, lend itself well to to um, financial institutions wanting to make this transition? And you know, one of the things that immediately that come to mind, Prashad, is what you mentioned earlier. Right. We have the four elements of the turnkey approach. So one of them is the organization, which is the people, mm -hmm. and that, that would be more of, you know falling into staffing constraints, on uh, dated expertise. Uh, geographic locations, depending on how you're set up within your teams, you know, that would be one option. The other one would be the process. So when you're thinking of process, it's individual channels, lack of documentation, limited um, visibility, and again, you know, policies and procedures. We can talk about roles and responsibilities and all that. Um, and these are all the things you have to consider. And then you go into the infrastructure, you know, on-premise, services heavy, costly administration. These are all the things you have to take in consideration. And then finally, we have the technology, aging tools, dependent on rules, heavily customized. You know, these are all the things that take a lot of time of all these teams, and it takes a lot of time of management, you know, to change things around, to get the uh, analysts uh, reviewing things in a different way. Um, while in the world of fraud, we have to adjust as things come, it is really critical to understand the technology and the solution that you choose to make it easier and simplify the entire process. Now, that way, you can cover more in a short period of time. Great. All right. Um, it looks like uh, you know that was sort of the, the the last of our questions. I don't think we have any others at this time. Um, well, I hope uh, I hope you all found this session beneficial, and I want to thank Debbie, our keynote speaker and resident expert, for for her perspective and for really shedding some some uh, uh, very uh, informative light on uh, what it means to actually practically implement a, a turnkey approach and, and what she's seeing day to day uh, through her managed services operation and, and benefiting you know hundreds of customers uh, that, uh, that that Guardian Analytics has. So so with that, uh, you know, I would like to conclude our presentation. I want to thank you all for making the time today. Uh, if you have any any further questions. Uh, please do you know, send them along to us. We'd be happy to try to address them offline. Uh, but uh, again, uh, thank you once more and uh, goodbye. Thank you.